what we now wish to do is to move on to, to a panel, which is going to be facilitated by Mary Tukumane, who I can see is here, which is always good and reassuring. And we're going to invite each of the IO leaders. So these are colleagues who've been leading interventions and also the people who've been leading work in their own institution. And really to, to think about our experience of implementing and sustaining the I Belong project. So to move from a project to a culture change. So, sorry, Mary, over to you. Thank you, Liz. Um, thank you and um, good afternoon, everybody. Um, this is a panel with the um, leaders of the different uh, institutional partners. And as you know, um, we have uh, three um, intellectual outputs and four institutional partners. And this part is to talk about the challenges um, to, I mean, creating sense of belonging within, uh, given, given the diversity of the student population always asks for a lot of uh, institutional commitment, but also commitment within, um, within the teams. So for this panel, um, we uh, have uh, four persons, Marike Mewese, she is Associate Professor Educational Sciences, Director of the Bachelor Pedagogical Sciences at the Erasmus University Rotterdam, but also the project leader of the I Belong Project. Uh, you heard her this morning. Well, Liz uh, doesn't need any introduction anymore. Um, and Liz is, 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 is the person who is representing uh, Edge Hill within the I Belong uh, Consortium. Then uh, we have Miriam Lotze. Miriam is Associate Professor at Rostock University in Germany. And previously, um, she was also part of the I Belong project team at the University of Osnabrück. Um, then also Sofia Marques da Silva uh, will join. She's a principal researcher and associate professor at the faculty of psychology and education sciences at the University of Porto. Um, and she is the project leader on behalf of the University of Porto. We have 20 minutes, so um, I'm, I'm not going to, and we try to um, um, have a, a few questions uh, and, and, and a discussion with them. Um, with the panel members. So um, if that's okay, I'm going to continue to my first question and I would like to invite Marika uh, to um, elaborate on the question, why you think I belong is special in focusing on team building and getting team members to be involved. Yes, thank you, Mary. Um, there are two things uh, I would like to emphasize here. So two things that are important. The first thing is, um, is that I often notice, at least in my university, um, is that staff professionalization on the topic of diversity and inclusion is often done and organized based on personal preferences of individual staff members. And the I Belong project is special in that the entire staff team of a course of study is involved. So staff members who are teaching in the dialogue days, those same teaching staff members uh, also participate in the team teacher reflections we have organized. So this really is done as a team, the staff professionalization. And for this, you need to support of the management. So key here is the institutional support. The second thing is that um, we have designed the three interventions of the I Belong project in such a way that they mutually relate um, and they strengthen each other. So they build, they build uh, upon each other. Um, I would specify this a little bit more. So first year students, um, the I Belong Peer student mentors, um, they meet each other at the start of the first uh, year, so the bachelor one year. 
uh, and they meet with staff members as well who are involved in this dialogue between students and staff and they engage in a continuing dialogue throughout the academic year. That's what a dialogue And cases on the topic of diversity and inclusion um, in the course programs, uh, they are collected by our student peer mentors and by students themselves. And we use those cases on topics of, uh, on, the, on diversity and inclusion and exclusion in the team teacher reflections. So in the staff professionalization in which our staff teams are involved. And our first year students and our student peer mentors, uh, they are meeting each other in the mentoring program we have organized. And as we already heard in the uh, panel with our mentors, the first year mentees can become mentors themselves when they are continuing their education. Um, and in this way, we really are building the community in our courses. So not only among students, but also involving our staff as staff and mentors, they also connect in the dialogue days and in the team teacher reflection. So those are the two main aspects in which I think uh, I belong is special related to the whole team approach and uh, the team building. Thank you so much, uh, Marika. Liz, you, um, in your earlier uh, introductions, uh, you mentioned that with I Belong, we want to move, in fact, from a project to a sustainable program. And to do that, you need to also engage and collaborate within your own institution. And so what are your, uh, what is your view on the challenges of promoting ownership and engagement on a team level and also on an institutional level? Thank you, thank you, Mary. I have to say, originally, I found it quite challenging to get the whole team involved, uh, especially when we were volunteering to put on activities, then they, there was some sense that that gave them some time that that they could do some of the other things they needed to do at the start of the academic year, for example. Um, but what became really important for me was the, the management support and enthusiasm. So once, um, once managers within the faculty and the university started to engage with the project, then that, that really helped to encourage busy staff to engage and, and staff are under so many pressures to get involved in all sorts of things. So to see that it was something that was valued and would be recognized by, by the faculty and the institution, that really did help us. I think perhaps more importantly than that, and, but also connected to that was about success. So originally when I started asking people if they would let me do some of these, these things with their, their program teams, they didn't really know whether it would work or, or how effective it would be. But as people started to see the, the nature of the work that we were doing and the impact that it was having, and people started to talk, then you create a buzz. And so sharing success, success really encourages other people to get involved and to find out what's going on and to think about whether there are things they might be able to use in their own work. So that's helped. But I also had to work flexibly, and, and I suppose it's about letting go of control to some extent. So allowing people to own the process and adapt it to their own context. So providing resources or sharing some of the things that I've been working on and really letting people see how it would fit. So for example, we wanted to run our uh, team teach reflection in a certain way, but actually it made more sense to connect it into existing structures around staff meetings and things like that. We wanted people to work um, around certain activities, but we got much better buy-in when we understood the challenges that they were facing and how our activities could help them to solve their own problems and, and to work together and, and to share what we had and allow people to adapt. So, I think probably management support, sharing our success and, and, and allowing people to take ownership and tailor things to their own context are what really helped us to kind of 
overcome those challenges and, and, and perhaps hopefully move towards a more embedded approach that will which will endure beyond the life of the project. Thank you. Um, Sophia, I, um, I, I wanted to ask you uh, to also elaborate on um, how you organize institutional commitment and support for your interventions, and especially in collaboration with other stakeholders and partners. Um, uh, thank you, Mary, for, for the question. Well, in fact, we, we had, as all um, members of I Belong, the experience of developing this project and uh, the, the activities in our own uh, institutions and in, in the Educational Sciences program. And of course that, you know, all universities at the moment are very concerned with the social responsibility of universities and inclusion of students and quality inclusion of students are, you know, are a fact. So, well, it, it would be a given that our institutions would support this, this project. Well, we are, we are part of it. So, uh, and of course in our institution, these issues of inclusion and diversity, they are part of the core curriculum. So we are used to discuss these. Uh, we have several projects in our research center on these. We have a mentoring pro program very well established before I belong. Um, and we might be tempted to think that, well, everything is, is granted here and, you know, that, uh, that we don't need to, to you know, to, to be much concerned with the, with the support or to be surprised with, the, with the, the things that we might find out. So we were, uh, we, we had the support of the department leaders, of course, my colleagues, but, you know, this familiarity is good, of course, but because I have my life very, me and Alexander that was with me, uh, we had our lives very facilitated by, by that. So it's a common language. It's, we are discussing things that we all think that we know and we discuss. And it was very interesting too and surprising to see, for example, among students, how they didn't uh, were aware of other colleagues uh, struggling so, and it was in the same faculty. Students from the same uh, from the same class uh, around the table in one of our activities, and well, suddenly they realized that they didn't know what was happening with their colleague, and it was. Uh, and then we did what uh, also what uh, Marek was was mentioning about using uh, results from the the dialogue days and from the focus group discussion with students to motivate and stimulate the discussion among teachers during the teacher training reflection. And it was again very interesting to see my colleagues, our colleagues to discuss what their students and anonymized of course, were saying about classes, about interactions, about learning, about struggling, about positive and negative. So that was the first thing about, you know, having this support because it's familiar, it's, it's a comfortable environment, we know, but at the same time, it's like, uh, you know, we don't know everything, uh, even if this is our daily basis discussions. Uh, so it was very interesting to see how we could also cooperate with the mentoring uh, program and add another layer to that program coming from, from Ivy Long. So also having the support of our colleagues from the mentoring program, uh, it was important to develop the, the project. And we have a lot of projects like this. So we are always asking people to, to help us and to let us develop. But another interesting aspect in our experience in Porto was because at some, uh, we decided also to develop the I Belong project in another institution uh, 50 kilometers away from Porto, uh, and it was a, it was uh, challenging and interesting at the very, at the same time uh, because it was a polytechnic institution. So we have a different institutional culture, uh, different languages. It was a different program. It was management uh, program. You know, uh, there is a lot of different uh, things that we were not familiar with. So in that context having the institutional leader on board, uh, it was uh, crucial to have the, that institution uh, with us and you know, having teachers allowing us to 
you know, disrupt their classroom. And it was during the online issue. So it was during the, the pandemic. So it was even more uh, challenging um, because we don't know those that students, we didn't know so well the teachers, the programs, the, you know, and, at, and it was interesting uh, also to acknowledge um, that the, the disciplinary cultures that influence how they understand taken for granted concepts as inclusion or, or diversity. Uh, and it was uh, interesting because we also learn, me and Alexandra, we also learn new competences on how to translate you know, theoretical concepts that we are so familiar with in our environment in the, in the University of Port, in our faculty and department. Uh, and it's, in the end, those are also common sense concepts. So, you know, the society used those. So it was uh, also an effort, an extra effort to learn how to uh, translate those concepts into a common language, a common ground in order to develop the, the the activity otherwise it would be it would be impossible so we also did the power walk online so Alexandra was uh, in charge of that uh, we did a little bit uh, different in what concerns uh, tools but it was the same exercise that Pravini presented earlier uh, and it was very interesting to see for example how students were not so aware of differences they they think that well we are all treated equally and it was interesting for us to deal with uh, with uh, this different uh, understanding. So, um, due to this uh, due to these differences, for us in this case to have the support of the of the leader, the main leader of this uh, institution, uh, which is also very interested in the results. So, uh, from the questionnaire as well, and from the activities. So, we need to give them feedback in a month or so about the activity. So the person, the leader uh, himself is very much interested in, in, in the topic and in how they can also use our, our program for them. They are starting the mentoring program. So I, might, I think that I belong may help this institution in you know, uh, putting together a, a program. So the tools that we have in our website, I think that they, they will use it for them. Thank you so much, uh, Sophia. And um, Miriam, so um, can you uh, share a little bit about the work that you did within your previous institution to scale up the work of uh, I Belong uh, at, to other departments? Yes, sure. Um, I think there were two key points um, I can uh, highlight here. Um, this is first the acceptance uh, for mentoring uh, in many faculties of the university. So there was a um, high acceptance of mentoring itself and that helped uh, to roll out the uh, I belong mentor community mentoring idea for a whole university approach for mentoring uh, in the last semester. And, um, especially the key situation with the pandemic um, where solutions were needed, um, how we can introduce and welcome first year students who only have this online and digital learning uh, setting. How can they build social networks? How can they uh, can feel as a part of a university? And, this key, uh, key situation also helped uh, for this whole university approach. And um, these two factors were, um, yeah, we, yes, were uh, really um, the key for having then the OSCAR mentoring program where every first year student in the last winter semester became an experienced student um, uh, and they had uh, a group mentor uh, mentoring with four or five first year students with one mentor. And um, so this were the key factors that helped us to roll out the community mentoring. Thank you so much, um, Miriam. 
Well, as you as you see, is that the the I Belong project? I mean, Marika already mentioned it. It, it all the different uh, intellectual outputs are interconnected, but also the work to make the work done, to uh, disseminate, to uh, embed it, and to make sure that it will be uh, continued. That asks for more. Um, you know, a layered kind of activities on different levels within the institution. Um, I have, um, I just want to, I just have two minutes and I want to really um, stress the, the fact that um, although when we talk about sense of belonging, we think of students, but what is interesting in I Belong is that we also collaborated hugely with students. And I just wanted to ask all panel members very quickly to say something um, and, and each a few seconds to say something about their experiences in working with students to make a success of the I Belong uh, activities. Miriam, can I start with you? Yes, sure. Um, I think the participation of the students themselves is the one and only way. Um, so um, you have to meet the need of the students and pick them up where they are. And so communication and interaction were the key aspects um, we uh, at University of Osnabrück um, were really uh, in need of and uh, that helped us to um, really meet the needs of the students uh, and also to um, develop uh, the, the IOs from, from, the, uh, from the I Belong project, especially the community mentoring, but also the dialogue days there were whole uh, uh, or huge ideas were from the students um, how to address the first year students at uh, in our case um, it was uh, the dialogue days were was a welcoming um, uh, uh, session for first year students and um, really much of the ideas uh, came from the students themselves. And I think that uh, was the key factor for the, for the success of uh, the um, IOs. Thank you, Miriam. Unfortunately, we don't have time anymore to, um, to listen to the other panel members because otherwise the program um, will be too much uh, short in the last part. So I give the floor back to Liz and thank you so much for listening to this panel co uh, conversation. Thank you. Thank you, Mary, so much for facilitating the discussion. And thank you to all our colleagues from all our institutions for sharing so much. And I think we could have gone on, especially about the contribution of our students who I have to say saved me when I was faced with 300 students in a tiered lecture theatre. They were fantastic. 